Hi there, I'm XO, and today we're going to talk about CGA Composite. Now I'm going to start right off and say that this was a passion project for Python. Um, I don't know how many hours he put into this, but I do know that he has identified 231 games that are capable of supporting CGA Composite. Now back in Exodus 5 we did have, I think it was about 150, maybe 130 games that were identified. And when you started them, like Agent USA, for example, it would tell you, hey, if you want to use composite when you play this game, uh, hit F12 once the game starts, and it'll switch over to composite mode. Um, now you don't need to anymore. It's all automated. It's uh, really freaking cool how it does it. Let's go look at, uh, where's the one we set it today? It really shows it off. You know what? It's so new. I haven't even added it to the menu yet. King's Quest 1 SCI version. And I'm picking this one on purpose to show you how bad this looks when you don't have it set up right. So notice when we start it here, it says, do we want to play with composite CGA or with EGA or poor quality CGA? We're going to start with that poor quality CGA. Uh, this is an option, uh, an example of one of my new menus I created for some of the games. Uh, it's showing right now we're set for EGA with a game blaster. And, if we, and it shows you all your possible modes down here. I'm going to say yes, we want to change it. Let's switch over to monochrome CGA. And for this, let's go with, uh, well, let's do a good old Sound Blaster. Now, this is a dithered down CGA. Uh, Sierra loved to dither things down. They would create the graphics at a higher resolution and then dither them down. And so you can see here, that's pretty... Difficult to make out, especially like the text down here. Introduction, begin game. You can barely read this stuff. Uh, if we hit begin game, let's go look and see what the game looks like. Slowly. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it almost looks like Neo looking into the Matrix. Uh, you know, we just need some falling numbers and things. And it looks like you're looking at code that kind of makes a uh, screen here. Let's go feed the sea monster. Here it comes. Whoop! Good sound. Poor King Graham. No, you can't even see the sea monster come up and smile at the camera. It's so hard to see. Now, let's play the same game, but in composite mode. Yeah. This time, notice it doesn't ask us what video type we want. It's, it detects we're doing composite mode. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it's only going to ask us what sound type we want. Quite a bit different, isn't it? It's still a CGA game at the end of the day, but that's a lot of resolution for a CGA game. There's a lot of detail going on here that is uncommon for the time. Let's go feed him again and see if it looks any different. I can see uh, King Graham's face this time. He was clearly scared. I can see his eyes bugging out. I can make out a lot more details, uh, including the spines on him. still hard to see him smile, but I get the idea what's going on here. Now, t for comparison's sake, let's watch the same thing, but this time, EGA. Look at that. We got some color now. We can read things clearer. Now, this game is an example of a game that was made for EGA, that was then downported. I mentioned earlier, it was, um... Downsampled to CGA. So that shows what happens when you get a higher resolution game in a CGA graphics, and there's almost too much detail to make out at that level. Oh, now I can even see that the uh, with the color that the monster was wearing King Graham's hat. Now, if we go back though to a game that is actually from the time period, 
Let's go to Agent USA. We're going to install the game. Done. Uh, no graphics filter. Let's do CGA mode. And RGB color output is ten, standard CGA. Now what I'm going to do here before I get that going, let's put him over there. Let's start him up again. Move him over there. Bring back our first guy. And we're going to run him side by side. On the left is going to be RGB color, and on the right is going to be composite. Okay? So RGB composite. So there's some distinctly distinct color differences. Look at the TV, for example. On the left-hand side, we have some bright cyan, but their details are lost. The legs of the TV on the right-hand side, or maybe that's a fuzz bomb, have a different color to them. Here, especially, the little guys are going to look like little hats. And over there, they just look like blurry things. I guess they were fuzz bodies, so they were supposed to be blurry. Here, huge difference. The, the sky actually has a natural color to it. Uh, we don't have a nuclear fallout occurring on the right-hand side like we do on the left-hand side. Now, if I hit the F12 key, you'll see it goes away. F12 was the key that we used to use to turn CGA composite on and off. And it used to be something you had to do manually. Uh, a, you had to know the game supported it. And B, you had to know that was the button to hit. And now it is automatic based on your menu choices you picked in the beginning. It really brings a lot of character to some of the old games. Uh, the CGA palettes on some games are not very different, and in other cases, it's massively different. Let's see here. Let's look at Creature Creator. Do the same thing we did last time and get two different screens up. We'll run them side by side. RGB on the left, composite on the right. Massive difference. Without composite, we have no color in this game. I'm glad I picked this option. I, I mean, I probably should have talked to Python before I made the video and asked him to give me a couple games that he thought really showed off the difference. But I think this was, this is a pretty strong example right here. You know, color on one side, no color on the other. Uh, now, if you do start it in this mode over here and you decide, well, oh, man, I sure wish I started the other way. You can hit F12 and it will change it over. Now, this is... I talked in a recent video about preservation, and these are the things I think that are the icing on the cake. Um, you can find Creature Creator on an Abandonware site out there. You can download it. Uh, you can take some piece of crap ROM-based DOS box emulator that treats uh, DOS games like zip file ROMs and drag and drop it on top, and it will start the game. It may not be the right speed. Uh, it might not realize your color palette, so it's got things compressed, but the game's running. And yes, I, if it's not very clear, I have a big problem with treating DOS games like ROMs. They're not ROMs. A ROM is a static bit of information that does not change. A DOS game has driver files, setup files, multiple video options, multiple sound card options, um, key mapping. These are all big differences between a set of files that make up a DOS game and a ROM, which is a single file that contains everything needed for a game and is generally untouchable. You're not going to start up a NES ROM and say, well, I want 16 colors today and I want four colors tomorrow. It is what it is. You get an NES ROM. DOS games are not static. They're very dynamic. And to preserve them properly means to preserve them dynamically. CGA Composite is an often overlooked mode. Uh, I overlooked it for a long time. I was unaware of it. I never had a CGA composite monitor, so I did not realize the benefits of CGA composite mode. One of the negatives about DOSBox is it is so complicated and so undocumented. 
You can use DOSBox for 10 years and never know that CGA composite is something you could have done. One of my goals with Exodos is to take things like this, find people like Python who understand, appreciate, and love these things, and use his knowledge and this project to take what would otherwise be a niche option in the configuration file that a handful of people have ever used and instead come over here and create a playlist that has 231 games on it that are set up and ready to go for anybody to enjoy CGA composite without having to know a single damn thing about editing a configuration file or which version of DOSBox you need to start or does this game support it or not? Yeah, I mean, believe it or not, if you Google CGA composite games, there is not a list online that tells you all of them. Uh, you will find some attempts at lists. You will not find an all-encompassing list. The same is true for almost every playlist I have over here. There is no list online of every game that has Roland MT32 support. I have found lists that are 600 games deep, and people say, oh, that must be all of them. Well, you can see here we have 884. I have found, you can go to Moby Games and you can sort by games that have Roland MT32 support. Now, the number might be close to what I have here, but that's because it has two, 300 compilations and duplicates that are the same, you know, you've got Lemmings, Lemmings 2, Oh No More Lemmings, The Lemmings Compendium, The Lemmings Collection, Lemmings for Everybody. You know, it's Lemmings over and over and over, when in reality it's Lemmings Lemmings 2. And Oh No More Lemmings is just an add-on pack for Part 1, so it really doesn't need to be its own entry. I bring this up because until someone starts going through these things and finding all the details, they can become lost to time. Uh, we have had multiple games where Python comes out and says, Hey man, it has an option for CGA, but when you start it, it always plays EGA. And so when that happens, we go out and we try to find the original files for the game, reinstall from scratch if we can find them, and then often we find files that were left out. You know, back in the 80s and 90s when people were uh, pirating these games, we were on dial-up connections that were pretty slow. So if you could cut out, you know, uh, two or 300 kilobytes of data, they would. No one was thinking about preservation back then. They were thinking about trying to play a game or share a game online. And um, the files they would cut out were the driver files they thought wouldn't be used. So if EGA was the mode that most people had at the time, they'd cut the CGA files. Or if a game was relatively new and had EGA before EGA was common, maybe they cut the EGA uh, files and just distribute the CGA ones. And what happens over time is these become the definitive copies on the web. Uh, no one comes and takes the copy they have on the shelf and redumps it because, well, there's one floating around out there and it's on everywhere site. It's on every abandonware site. You go to myabandonware.com, boom, there it is. You go to archive.org, oh, there it is. And people just say, oh, well, that game has been preserved. And it has not. It's, well, I mean, it's been preserved incorrectly. Um... So luckily there are projects like TDC, Total DOS Collection. Uh, there's projects like my own uh, with ExoDOS and the other Exo projects. And a handful of other people out there that take this stuff seriously. And the idea is to find original games, dump them, get all the driver files, and make sure that everything's there. And then ExoDOS specifically, above and beyond other projects, wants to then take that, configure it in every way possible, and then release that with a menu so that you can say, yeah, I want to play this in CGA RGB, CGA Composite. I want to play it with a Roland MT32. I want to play it with a Tandy 3 voice. I want, you know, whatever options we can possibly emulate that makes sense, we are. Uh, you know, in this case, the IBM Music Future Card, which I just did a, music, uh, a video on recently, you know, the support for that was just added. <laughs> like, in the last couple of weeks, week or two? And at least in the development builds of staging that I got my hands on. And that is a, 
a card that I had no experience with before they added support to it. So being able to hear it for the first time, it's neat. It takes a game that I have, you know, I, I use Conquest of Camelot in the video as the demonstration. It takes a game I've played probably a dozen times, and I've heard even more than that because I do like the soundtrack quite a bit for it. And I get to hear it in a whole new way suddenly. So, thank you, Python, for all the work you did with CGA Composite Mode and for taking the time to vet these games out. I think we improved the backend files on four or five of these games after realizing that they were either hacks or incomplete due to your work on this. And at this point, every single person who downloads Exodus version 6 can benefit and experience these games in a, in a version that uh, is frankly not very common, it's very niche. I'm telling you right now. Uh, I don't know how many games on the CGA composite list are actually available to purchase in any form or not. Um, I'm looking here for a game that I can say, yes, I 100% can tell you is available right now on uh, something like good old games. And I'm not seeing something that jumps out to me. Ultima. I'm sure the Ultima games are available. But when you fire up Ultima 1 after you've paid your hard-earned money for it, here's what you're not going to get. You're not going to get a menu saying, do you want to play it or do you want to play with updated graphics? Well, I'm going to say uh, without. I want to go regular. Then you're not going to get a menu that says, well, do you want it in composite or RGB? And you're not going to get it in composite mode unless you know how to go in, replace the version of DOSBox they're using, edit the configuration file to enable composite mode, and then either set it up to turn the composite mode on for sure, or you have to know to hit that F12 key to enable it. Um, I'm not saying it's impossible to do, but uh, man, that's, uh, that's good looking for CGA graphics right there. And anyone who knows my uh, relationship with Ultima knows that if I'm complimenting the game, Something must be really, really cool about it. Let's uh, let's move that over here, and actually, no, let's close that in the way. Let's launch it again, and I want to look at that with RGB output. Move them up there. Oh, come on, Origin. Mm-hmm. Come on, buddy. I don't remember it taking this long last time. There it is. Look how washed out that is. I mean, that's typical CGA, but the composite really adds a lot of depth and detail to it. I'll stop going on about it now, and uh, I will leave the rest to be discovered by you guys once you get your hands on the pack. There you go, all the wizardry games. They're going to be in composite mode for you. Zork Quest. Uh, anyway. Another really cool feature, another example of people contributing to the project and making it better than I ever could have by myself. Thanks, guys.